एवरीवन वेलकम टू दिस डिजिटल लर्निंग प्लेटफॉर्म ऑफ डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ कॉलेज एजुकेशन कर्नाटक एलएमएस टुडे इन दिस पार्ट ऑफ वीडियो वी विल कंटिन्यू द डिस्कशन ऑफ एज यू लाइक इट बाय विलियम शेक्सपियर एनालिसिस ऑफ द ऑफ एक्ट थर्ड इन टुडे सेशन सो वी हैड डिस्कस द act third in a capsule summary earlier in one of the videos there we came to know in the act third of the play rosalind and celia in disguise set us down in the forest of arden they buy a plot of land from corin um, with the help of a shepherd named corin and then they start their pastoral life and rosalind also finds in the uh, scene Uh, two that the trees covered with the sheets of poetry dedicated to her she got attracted to the lines there and enamored by those lines and she searches for the author of those poems but she comes to know that it is orlando then when she was observing that she meets even orlando she meets him as in disguise she realizes his love sickness and uh, she tests him whether his love is true or not but she realizes it and having lost uh, rosalind or orlando was in um, under extreme love sickness or feeling of love towards her and she as ganymede offers him to cure his problem thus the capsule summary details the progress of the play towards uh, further complication here where the two uh, the pair of lovers uh, protagonist and uh, the, the male and female characters here they love each other but they are not in a position to express it let's see what would happen ahead in the uh, in the act 3 in detail Yeah, when we come to the scene one, in the Act Three, scene one, we have Duke Ferdinand who compels Oliver to bring Orlando back. He already commissioned Oliver to search Orlando, but Oliver comes back without any result. I mean, without searching, without uh, bringing Orlando. This makes Duke Ferdinand furious, and he warns or 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 Oliver. Uh, and uh, he considers or oliver as villain the way he ill treated uh, his own brother orlando all these things we observe here that uh, uh, irony in uh, uh, duke ferdinand is evident because he being a villain in the story can considers oliver as villain he doesn't realize his villainy instead he only thinks of oliver's villainy that is a reflection on the human nature who finds out problems and weaknesses of others forgetting the same in them so oliver he reveals his reluctance to bring orlando now he also realizes his ill treatment to uh, his um, brother he never loved his brother that he realizes a kind of introspection on one's own mistake is evident in this part we see that is there in the character oliver because he realizes his brothers the way he treated him on the other hand for duke ferdinand also he introspects his deed because he is the one who made celia go away from the court along with rosalind thus we find the scene is uh, filled with that kind of uh, shakespeare's technique of throw in you know, a focusing light throwing light on human nature and also it is inter- it is observed is observed that here he compels oliver to do bring uh, orlando back therefore he, he even he tells him that uh, he has one year to find a year to find his brother uh, and bring him back either dead or alive right either dead or alive jeevan dallo that is a the thing then in the interim he also as a punishment to oliver he seizes all his property estate and uh, he 
he he would take possession of all that until orlando comes back i mean he brings orlando back to the court so this we find oliver uh, says no and he cannot and uh, this again makes uh, uh, duke ferdinand in other uh, in an under further worry and conflict but we also find duke's guilt here because he is helpless to find his daughter now so by that deed he feels guilt he there is a note of introspection in the scene one when we move on to scene two the pastoral convention the probably the best one the best scene which reveals the uh, discussion of the pastoral convention in scene two because we see uh, here uh, orlando's uh, description is there he enters with a piece of paper in which he has written a sonnet poems and uh, those poems are the sonnet is addressed to the sonnets are addressed to rosaline and he says uh, he will write all these love poems on the bark of the trees he will write he hang those poems on the trees and uh, he expresses his love by hanging his sonnet on a tree also and leaves it there and uh, he comments there run run orlando carv car on every tree right it is there in act 3 second scene line number 9 you see uh, run run orlando carv on every tree that means he has that much to express he can carve his love poems on every tree there thus we find uh, um, the the height of uh, his love towards uh, rosaline the dedication rather i can say the the true love he has towards rosaline is haunting him that he cannot live without rosaline that is expressed through his romantic poems in the meantime we find the entry of touchstone and karin they have they make an interesting discussion a debate of uh, on the on the concept of country and court the difference between the contrast between the court life and country life uh, even uh, uh touchstone asks tells uh, corin what he thinks about shepherd's life and he then reveals uh, uh his uh, idea of shepherd's life highlighting its merits at the same time we see uh, a question from touchstone whether or if uh, corin uh, ever lived in court but corin says no and there uh, touchstone says that uh, uh, corin is damned that he's uh, uh because he never lived in court he is damned that he missed something very important thing that is there he cannot learn in the in the village i mean in the country life he cannot learn good manners if he can enter the court he learn their good manners and uh, therefore corin's manners must be wicked because he never entered the court life he has wicked manners in his opinion then uh, he is damned for that Karin does his level best to uh, argue with the uh, touchstone but he could not uh, succeed in the verbal battle but you observe here touchstone's language of learning good manners in the court is another example of irony from shakespeare the people at the court have actually showed bad manners so far except uh, duke uh, uh, senior and others but still the entry into the uh, forest there they realizes good manners thus we find a kind of uh, uh, irony operating in the lines here then the merits of the town and the rustic life is under discussion here in the words of touchstone and karin where touchstone representing the town as the best one whereas uh, uh, karin supporting the rustic life as the peaceful one the best one so in the meanwhile we find the entry of uh, uh the scene goes to the discussion of rosalind and celia also rosalind is now dressed as ganymede right so she enters reading the poem that uh, that were uh, hanged on the tree and there she finds in every other line the rhyming lines of the tree uh, lines of the poems are addressed to rosalind herself right rosalind so when uh, touchstone finds this he marks it those lines he composes some poem there he uses the same rhyme scheme but he insults rosalind by comparing her to animals prostitutes naughty things he then remarks truly the trees eats bad fruit that is in the act 3 scene 2 line number 105 you find trees 
uh, yield bad fruit like that he comments on those uh, lines on the trees romantic lines on the trees that they yield bad fruit he touched on practical mindset i mean he's against that romantic love the concept of pastoral or romantic love that is evident then we find entry of celia she appears as eliana and then she proceeds to read the poems and uh, when she finds out that the poems are addressed to rosaline she sends away corin and uh, touchstone and then turns to rosaline for her talk she asks uh, uh, rosaline that if she knows who is hanging her name on the trees rosaline says uh, says she doesn't know and uh, then she flees celia to tell her but celia finally reveals that it was orlando the man who wrote all those verses on the uh, trees but we also observe the sudden change when she Uh, learns when rosaline learns that those lines are from orlando she expresses her love towards orlando this is become this has this becomes the point of criticism to celia for her uh, for rosaline's uh, attraction towards instant attraction towards orlando then then the in the same scene in act we see Ro- disguised rosaline meets uh, orlando because orlando and jacques enter the spot the two women actually hide in order to listen to them jacques tells orlando that he would have been just as happy without his company and uh, orlando says the same thing so that means you observe melancholy note of jacques that even without you i can be happy in my attitude that 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 can tell us on the one hand and then uh, jacques tells orlando uh, uh, no uh, orlando agrees not to uh, mar any more Uh, trees with his writing as long as uh, jacques does not mar the verses by reading them unsympathetically so jacques tells orlando uh, he was searching for a fool and now he met a fool that fool is orlando in his opinion so because he considers uh, yeah jacques um, um, for orlando jacques is drowned in the brook that look uh, uh, not happy brook uh, look but uh, in you, you shall see him there is a line in uh, act 3 there you find uh, uh, orlando criticizes jacques jacques gets up and he moves out of that place uh, and but he, he, he ha- because he has been called uh, he realizes that he has been called as a fool in the meantime rosalind and uh, celia comes out rosalind comes out and speaks to orlando there uh, the discussion um, of this love further continues he asks him that uh, what the time is and uh, he tells her the there is no time in the forest no time is there in the forest and she points out that time moves at different speeds for everyone and she then introduces celia as shepherd as eliana and her sister orlando uh, then she as a young man uh, she introduces herself as a young man ganymede and uh she, when orlando notices her superb accent because she is from court she, he knows uh, he doesn't know that but he identifies her superb accent good language she pretends to have a uncle in the town who taught her how to speak in a good manner this is the thing you observe again then the discussion of law right rosalind tells orlando that uh, somebody a man has been uh, Uh, running around the forest ruining the trees carving the name of a uh, uh, woman named rosalind this is just to test his mindset he admits that it is he and he expresses his true love towards rosalind and but uh, uh, she can imagine rosalind questions his love uh, that they, there is no sign of true love in him but he swears that he is in love with uh, rosalind this can tell us that Uh, the true love of orlando is expressed at this moment and it prov- it, it is given a vent it is given a forum to exhibit in that part of the forest by expressing the, through the poetic genius of shakespeare himself the poetic lines the poems composed and hung on the trees also indicate shakespeare's mastery of poems poetry along with that uh, we find uh, the uh, sonnet the and the, the trace of that sonnet is also practiced here the note to shakespeare sonnet is also available here and then uh, he expresses his true love with uh, rosaline there rosaline uh, yeah along with that orlando begs her to cure it right so uh, uh, begs her to cure his love therefore 
um, she offers uh, uh, her cure of his love sickness we also observe uh, there that uh, rosaline permits him to as ganymede permits him to treat her as rosaline that's uh, interesting an interesting thing because she being rosaline she hides her identity as ganymede but she is she demands him to treat her as if uh, rosaline then uh, uh, she allows him to that does she allows him to uh, find a solution and uh, cure his love right then we find uh, along with this touchstones uh, point uh, realistic uh, poetry which condemns or criticizes orlando's romantic poetry a satire of orlando's romantic poetry is presented in the same scene by um, by using realistic and uh, uh, yeah satirical poems of touchstone a kind of parody of uh, orlando's poem is introduced here anyhow we move on to scene number 3 well in uh, scene 3 uh, we are uh, again presented with touchstone's uh, attitude towards love his idea of uh, love being very practical and realistic he loves uh, adri a realistic goat herd but he considers that she is the right option for him because she is less poetic less imaginative less uh, uh she is not filled with uh, fantasy or uh, even false beliefs false love he considers so because she is very practical and uh, she doesn't love poetry and all that therefore for him adri is uh, less poetical which means uh, uh she even not doesn't know what is poetry what is imagination thus he comments on her and uh, uh, wishes or finds she is the right person to be his mate here he presents something against that romantic love and he condemns just as he condemned uh, that uh, uh, orlando's poetry in the last scene that it yields bad fruit the trees yield bad fruits he said some way right Re- referring the names of uh, uh, yeah the truly the tree yields bad fruit in uh, uh second scene uh, line 105 you find uh, he says so which means uh, ro- trees yield bad fruit because on the trees you find rosaline's name the the names are written with extreme um, imaginary line uh, imagination of love so here he says as a contrast to that kind of romantic love life should be love should be very practical and realistic and he finds that realistic love in even adri also she is a goat herd and he likes her therefore and then uh, he appears humorous in his description as its wits are uh, out of her reach whatever he says that doesn't reach her he says somewhere um, she was a fool or fool like that uh, she says uh, so he ignores her nonsense and tells her that he will marry her so he does he, whatever he speaks it that doesn't reach her in the uh, um, scene meanwhile we find uh, uh the situation uh, the confusions in the situation uh, leads uh, us to have the entry of jacques we observe that jacques was following uh, uh, touchstone he was observing everything and now he enters there again uh, uh, the scene there for presents a realistic love in contrast with romantic love and uh, his realism touchstone's realism is in contrast with that of the fantasy and the romantic love of silvius or even uh, orlando so here jacques also makes uh, his uh, points because we find uh, when somebody named sir oliver who comes there uh, uh, looking for adri as his uh, life mate he wanted somebody to intervene and uh, give uh, adri to him otherwise he considers that as an illegal marriage at that time the hidden uh, jacques comes out and tells that he can hand over he can give the adri to him uh, as a parent for example but uh, touchstone um, doesn't want that he uh, postpones that marriage that is the situation yeah meanwhile in the scene number 4 uh, we find uh, the depth of romantic love uh, expressed even through rosalind here 
So this character of Rosalind is interesting because she's part of the play on the one hand and she is also the one, also the one uh, who performs the role of a narrator or the one uh, who handle different plots and subplots of the play too. Because she is acting as a uh, central character here that uh, she is filled with uh, that love uh, for uh, Orlando now. She is waiting for his arrival in this scene. Her love for Orlando uh, is interesting. Similarly, we find uh, her love towards her father also. She is even anxious to meet him. But we find uh, the despair in the process of her love because uh, she is uh, unable to express her love to either of them. She cannot meet her father even. She cannot express her real uh, love towards Orlando because she has... Uh, hidden her, she has hidden her identity as Ganymede. That's the situation. Meanwhile, uh, we found, find the entry of uh, Corin again, comic entry, and uh, he uh, narrates the incident of Silvius owing uh, angry Phoebe. He tells uh, Rosalind that, he reports her that Silvius is wooing uh, angry Phoebe and expressing his love. There again, we are presented with the uh, pastoral love of uh, uh, character Silvius. But meanwhile, we observe um, Orlando's arrival delayed, uh, which uh, 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 Celia makes her point there that uh, uh, lovers in their love become very dishonest. Uh, she tells uh, <coughs> uh, um, uh, Rosalind that uh, because she, Rosalind is already worried because he doesn't appear, but she tells Celia tells him that. Uh, the promise from a lover is nothing. It cannot be relied upon. Here again, we find the touch of that realism or a criticism of uh, romantic love where a lover speaks of a lot of things in his uh, uh, romantic uh, expression of love whereas he doesn't uh, uh, perform all that. That is the situation. So anyhow, meanwhile, uh, we find Corinne's entry and uh, he reports that uh, Silvius and Phoebe are together and Silvius is... Uh, wooing Phoebe for her love. Meanwhile, Rosalind says, bring us to that site, this site, right? So, and you shall say, I'll prove a busy actor in their play. So, here we observe the role of Rosalind, not just as a main actor, but as a narrator who acts or intervenes in so many subplots and resolve the complications. This is there in line number 52, 53 in scene number four when we go to the fifth scene uh, it's again a satire on love with the example of Silvius pleading phoebe for love Silvius, who's desperate of uh, uh, not uh, able to win the heart of phoebe uh, uses all his ways i mean uh, he pleases her to or uh, he pleases a lot and uh, uh, demands uh, some mercy from her side but we find, though he begs Phoebe a lot, she simply scorns his love and tells him that she does not pity for him and for his pain and she doesn't feel it. She doesn't uh, uh, do any kind of response unless she can feel his love. Here we, say, we find the domination of Phoebe over uh, Silvius, where a woman uh, is at the deciding end, whereas a man who is now pleading a lot with all his prizing words, flattery. So, at that time, uh, the presence of pastoral love is seen here. The pastoral love because uh, Sylvia is similar to that of a Petrarchan uh, sonneteer. Someone in Petrarchan sonnets, you find a lover wooing his uh, beloved. Similar kind of example is seen here because Sylvia is uh, uh, trying to woo Phoebe who is not in a uh, not not already fallen in love with him. Therefore, he is wooing a lady who is superior to him. At that time, the characters here, Rosalind and Celia, were uh, hiding themselves, uh, watching them. So, she appears as Ganymede and Phoebe uh, gets attracted to her when she tried to convince or change her mindset. Because she speaks of uh, the same harsh words what Phoebe used to uh, Sylvia's. Mm, particularly, Ganymede makes Phoebe realize that she is not, uh, she is also a plain woman, not gifted with uh, that kind of beauty. 
so the price of silvius only made phoebe think that think uh, um, to think that she is some something like a goddess whereas ganymede made her realize that she has human behavior i mean she has a uh, simple beauty this kind of uh, realization she brought in phoebe and her harsh words made phoebe get attracted to her observe uh, the smooth uh, the lovely the flattery and praising words of silvius did not please uh, phoebe whereas uh, the harsh words of ganymede pleased uh, phoebe so there her flair for uh, love persuades uh, phoebe to love silvius again we find because uh, ganymede tries to because she is also in love with orlando therefore she knows how to change the mindset of phoebe and she did it successfully uh, but not uh, exactly phoebe does it uh, with a purpose of loving silvius but phoebe started loving silvius because to know the techniques of love from silvius and later to use those techniques to uh, love ganymede because phoebe at that moment falls in love with ganymede you find here that rosaline who is in the dress of ganymede get attracted to phoebe a kind of uh, homosexual attractions can be seen here um, though not very particularly evident uh, outwardly because the ganymede uh, or rosalind is in the dress of ganymede appears as a male though she attired in uh, ganymede ganymede's posture ganymede's uh, costume or dress still she uh, presents she has the characteristics of a woman that we can point out here then her role points out shakespeare's trick of characters yeah because that's very important because she acts as a uh, an intervening person to resolve the issue of love between silvius and phoebe she is the main actor along with that she performs the role of many intervening with many subplots and solving the tricks and we also find the discussion of uh, gender here because the concept of gender here because the transformation of her into ganymede presents her with a, a kind of role which enjoys a lot of freedom along with that she as ganymede tries to change the mindset of phoebe almost attracting her to herself but as a woman she cannot do that this kind of change in the uh, context uh, is because the change the gender role of uh, uh, rosalind thus the play in this act it presents interesting debate especially the debate between the different types particularly two types of love the pastoral or romantic love and uh, that of realistic and practical one all the characters who come here uh, uh, appears to use witty language brilliant uh, imagination thus the act is one of the very important uh, acts of the play Uh, when we come to the conclusion the words of wit and the usage of brilliant poetry in this act uh, reveals the mastery of the kind comic genius of shakespeare and we also find the developments in the act third paved way for the resolution of the complications in the plot of the play because at this point in this uh, act uh, rosalind is uh, um uh, in a position to express her love she is helpless to express her love because she is ganymede and at, after this act she resolves to settle the uh, complications of the uh, plot because uh, she changes her uh, decides to change her attire at some point in the story thus the uh, the the conflict reaching its zenith now started uh, moving towards denouement or happy ending thank you for watching see you in the next video